Welcome back. In this portion of our Tech V talk on parent-child well interactions, we're going to be discussing identification of well performance. Okay, so how do we quantify or identify that the child well is underperforming the parent well? And, you know, some of the general uh, rules are with well interference, IPs will be lower at equivalent time periods or cumulative volumes will be lower at equivalent time periods when compared to the parent well. And it may also show up as higher decline rates uh, compared to the parent well. So Mary, you've done some work with Bertrand with Verdazzo on ways to identify well performance. And in, in this analysis, you set everything up by cardinality. What is well cardinality? Sure. Uh, well cardinality is the number of wells that exist in a one square mile box drawn around each well. So it's a wells per section indicator with the parent well being well number one. Uh, if we look at uh, this example from the Milk River in southern Alberta, which is a well-known shallow, shallow gas zone which has been drilled up with vertical wells, we see here 1 to 18 wells drilled within this one square mile area and we're looking at a chart of rate in, in terms of MCF per day per well versus cumulative gas million cubic feet per well and we can see a very strong indication that going from well 1 to well 18 we're seeing uh, a decrease in well performance as well as cum well production. So here we have a timeline of one section of land. You're seeing from the parent well on a very progressive trend on a decline yeah. as you're starting to add in and just not getting the performance that you're expecting as if you're to compare it to your parent well. So here you have another slide, uh, another cardinal section in the Heritage Montney, this one a horizontal compared to a vertical. So could you go through uh, this section? Sure, uh, so we took the same analysis we saw from the, uh, the previous slide in the Milk River and we applied it to a heavily drilled area in the Montney and the Heritage area uh, where there's many wells or multiple wells per section. And in this case, there's nine wells in this particular section and we're plotting rate versus uh, cumulative production per 100 meters of well length. So similar to what, what we saw in the Milk River, uh, from well one to well two, we're seeing about a 39% decline. Fairly drastic. In, in reserves recovered and IP as well. And as we go from well two to well nine, we're seeing about a 76% reduction in, in rate versus cum recovery of the same, uh, you know, similar cumulative recovery. So this is a tool you can bring forward to any of the producers to help them identify their production, have a do look backs and see how their yes. new wells are performing? Exactly. So in, in heavily drilled areas, this is an, a, a way to see how your well performance is and uh, whether or not parent-child interactions are, are a problem. You have your first well done with probably a large spacing, uh, prop and intensity is on a much lower scale, you've got all the the advancements in your fluid systems and still with all these technologies adding in the uh, parent-child interaction is still a dominating factor in the area. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean the chart shows that there's clearly a degradation in well performance between the parent and sub subsequent child wells and this is occurring in spite of improvements in completion techniques such as high intensity profit loading and much tighter fracture spacing on some of the newer wells. So, uh, you know, in spite of these improved uh, completion techniques, we're still seeing the, the parent-child interactions reducing recovery factors from the, the later child wells. Thanks for watching this Tech V Talk on parent-child well interactions. Check back soon for our next section.